Welcome back to The Curbsiders. I'm Dr. Matthew Frank Watto here with my great friend and America's primary care physician, Dr. Paul Nelson Williams. This is a classic episode, number 320, where we talked about palpitations with Dr. Josh Cooper. What was one of your favorite take home points from this episode? I hate to call it a favorite as so much as impactful, but I one of the things we talked about towards the end were, were PVCs. And I think we often think of PVCs as a symptom of a sick heart and don't think of PVCs actually causing heart sickness or, or leading to actually underlying cardiac pathology. So I, I, I think oftentimes we see them on an EKG and we're like, that's weird. Um, <laughs> and, and check check their electrolytes, replete them, make sure that we're not missing anything else, then kind of go on our merry way and assume that we've done the most that we can do. And Dr. Cooper was sharing with us that if you have a burden of PVCs greater than 10%, that can actually lead to cardiomyopathy. So I just... I, I think oftentimes they are discounted or dismissed in the setting of normal electrolytes and sort of your, your bare bones workup and not thought about further. And instead, they probably warrant investigation by someone who deals with them on the day to day, whether we're talking ablation or, or medications or other options. But I, I think I've since the episode, I've been taking PPCs more seriously than I had up to that point, I think. Me too. And when I read the the report from like a, a 24 or 48 hour Holter, yeah. I'm always looking because a lot of times we'll say less than 1% PVCs. And I know in that case, it's not super worrisome in the sense that it would be if they said, you know, more than 10%. And he said, the heart has about 100,000 beats a day. So like that's more than 10,000 PVCs a day they're having. And he said that could be enough to cause that cardiomyopathy, which is, which is scary. Well, speaking of things that people tend to write off, sinus tachycardia. A lot of people are like, oh, it's just sinus tachycardia. To me, I'm terrified of sinus tachycardia because if, if I have a clinic patient and their heart rate is 115 at rest, I'm worried. Like, why is their heart rate 115 at rest? Maybe, Paul, it's because you walk in the room and you're America's primary care physician and just to be in your presence gives them tachycardia. But you need to figure that out. Like, you can't just write it off. And there's so many reasons why that could be. So I, I don't know about you, Paul, but it gives me it, – it makes me scared, and I do investigate. I have heard – trainees from time to time, when I ask about tachycardia, like, well, they're, they're always tachycardic. I'm like, that is the least reassuring thing. <laughs> <You're good. laughs> that actually sounds really bad. So, right. so you know, I agree with you. It's not unusual to be a little bit tachycardic when you're anxious at the doctor's office or in the presence of greatness such as myself, but you have to do your due diligence again, like the PVCs, and just make sure you're not missing some underlying scary cause because there's lots of scary right. things that can do it. There's common things, anxiety, pain, someone could be dehydrated. Maybe it's medications that the person's taking. Maybe you need to check a TSH and make sure it's not hi hyperthyroidism. I, I actually, I diagnosed Graves before I even saw a patient one time because the heart rate was 125 at rest. And I walk in and the patient just had this like kind of tremulous. And, you know, I was just like, I, I bet this person has hyperthyroidism and ended up, did, did end up having Graves. Um, and But there is even something, it's a diagnosis of exclusion. I don't know that I've ever made it, but there's an uh, basically an idiopathic or inappropriate idi idiopathic sinus tachycardia. And, you know, depending on how long that goes on, if it's fast enough, it could, you know, cause a tach uh, cardiomyopathy. So I wouldn't just throw a beta blocker at that. And uh, I would investigate it, make sure you, you're confident why this tachycardia is happening. And is it happening outside your office? Because if it is, you know, it might be worth sending them to cardiology. Now, Paul, um, but if, you know, PVCs, that's that you found something there with PVC. So maybe your patient's feeling PVCs, maybe you find sinus tachycardia, but what if you find nothing and you're working up the patient that comes in with palpitations? What, what do we do with that, Paul? Yeah, I really liked Dr. Cooper's framing of this. So their symptoms still mean that something is going on. So you can have a conversation saying, we've done a very thorough cardiac workup and we can be fairly certain that the symptoms are not coming from your heart. And that's good news. That means your heart at least is not going to kill you. But you know, even if this is something like anxiety, anxiety is a medical condition that warrants evaluation and appropriate treatment. So rather than saying, well, don't worry, this is nothing to worry about, still saying your symptoms are present, something is causing them. Now we just need to figure out what next. And he will make his best guess and, and connect them with whatever specialist or even back the primary care doctor who might be best equipped to manage it. But rather than saying, don't worry, everything's fine, because that doesn't mean their symptoms are gone, saying, well, this is probably not cardiac and we should figure out what hap what to do next to figure out what your symptoms are. Yeah. And in my experience, a lot of patients that come in with palpitations, they're really looking for your reassurance and they, they, they have a sense that it's probably nothing too serious because maybe in some cases they're like, it's been going on for years. It happens for a few seconds. It's kind of a fleeting feeling and I've never passed out or anything. I can exercise. And, and they're just, they just want you to say, okay, maybe this is nothing. And, and I think a lot of the times once you get that monitor, they, you, you correlate the symptoms with what their rhythm is and, and it's just sinus rhythm. 
um, I think a lot of patients are reassured and, and I am too, but if it is, you know, you can offer them, you know, the anxiety treatment, like Dr. Cooper said. So don't just, I, patients don't like when you just blame everything on anxiety. And I, I think talking, talking them through it and making sure that, you know, they're, you're taking it seriously and you can still offer a treatment, even if you didn't find a dangerous cardiac rhythm is, is the way to go. Right. So, uh, I will say that if you want to hear more about this, because we did discuss a lot more in this episode, then you can check out the link in the episode transcript below. And with that, until next time, I've been Dr. Matthew Frank Wado, and this has been another episode of The Curbsiders, bringing you a little knowledge food for your brain hole. Paul? Hi, everybody. Dr. Paul Nelson-Williams. Thanks and goodbye.